So I'm an experimentalist at heart. To me, that's a really nice way of understanding the world is just by directly asking questions of the physical environment that you are in and that your robot is in. I like thinking about how you can effectively perform a task or how you could create a robot to figure out how it could effectively perform a task. Here, the, the behavior that I was trying to affect is the energy transfer between the robot and the ground. And the reason that I wanted to do this is because I've taken robots to the desert. <laughs> in general, their problem running around, in my experience, is not actually that they can't go up dunes. It's that the desert is hot, sand is hard to run around on, and they overheat really fast. If you've ever gone for a beach run, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's just very tiring to run on sand. The simulation experiments that I did were just to take a granular media bulk behavior model, build a simulation of a robot jumping around using that, and then I systematically changed things about the robot's control to see what might give a better effect. When the leg is compressing, I don't change anything there because it's doing basically the exact thing that it should be doing. And then once it starts extending, what the nominal controller that I was basing my experiments on tells it to do is just push down very hard. So it switches to a stiff spring that pushes the robot up. And when you switch suddenly from that soft spring to the stiff spring, you push your foot further into the sand. What I ended up doing to get it to not do that is just add damping to the leg spring in proportion to the intrusion velocity of the foot. So only once your body starts to move up faster than your foot is going down will you start to push up and jump off. So one of the effects that this has is that you're never pushing really fast into the ground. Another one of the effects that it has is that you don't push as far into the ground. So you end up saving a lot of energy without losing any jump height. You never know whether the simulation that you've built is going to behave the way that the robot will behave in the real world. So what I did to test the robot side of this without you know, also testing the granular media at the same time uh, was to build a robot that pretends to be the ground. So this motor pretends to be a little spring so that when this is pushing down, um, it's able to hook so it can only go in one direction. And then in between hops, if something is jumping on top of this platform, it can reset and let the, the ground come back up to the top position. Close again, be ready for the next hop. The platform is programmed with another leg, <laughs> another minotaur leg turned upside down, so minotaur leg with a platform on top, and it moves up and down according to the force functions that the granular media physicists told me are the bulk behavior force functions for granular media. If you jump a robot on this platform, it pushes down the same way that sand would. With those experiments, I was able to confirm the same results that I got from simulation. I built a sandbox that's large enough for a single robot leg to jump in without being too close to any of the walls. And I set up the robot to jump on a linear rail into that box. The nice thing about having this little you know, sandbox is that I can do a bunch of experiments with different foot sizes, with different active damping gains, and with different jump heights. When I came up with the controller, um, that was me thinking like, aha, here I sit looking at my simulations, looking at the energy transfer, and I posit that I should be able to reduce the energetic transfer between the robot and the ground by adding this force to the controller that pushes it up the energy transfer landscape. And then I asked a lot of questions in simulation, in physical emulation, and in the physical world to make sure both that it should be robust across a bunch of different conditions, at least in theory, then to make sure that the robot behaves the way that we expect it to by testing it on this programmable platform, and then by making sure that the whole system behaves the way that we expect it to. It's important to build up that understanding by changing one variable at a time and only adding complexity on top of things that you already kind of have some verification that you understand. There really isn't that much separation between you know, a brain and a body and an environment. They're really kind of all part of the environment in a sense. That blending of the environment and the agent that's really fascinating to me, and I, I don't know where I will go with that in the future, but I really want to explore that. <laughs>